So give me a second while I context switch from listening to that great presentation of what Nexmo's doing. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive stuff. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to thank the Happy Days guys for hosting such a great event um, in Amsterdam again. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better time of year. Um, wow, the weather is amazing. Um, Obviously, you all think so too. It's a hot topic of conversation out in the networking sessions. Um, I'm from Austin, Texas, where it's about 100 degrees right now, which is, what, 38 degrees to the rest of the world. Um, so it's pretty painful to go outside. And here, stuck with a conflict of wanting to be outside, but also wanting to be in here for all these great sessions. So, um, But again, thanks, everybody, for being here. And, and I hope everybody's getting um, you know, great stuff from this event. Um, it's here in November, or uh, October, and it was an amazing event then as well, so um, it's nice to see the um, attendance on the rise. So anyway, what I'm gonna talk about is CPaaS, but monetizing the solutions um, versus the APIs. Obviously, monetizing the APIs, everybody hopefully is doing now, but what's really important is the solutions that those APIs are being leveraged for. We're gonna talk about it in the context, not from APIs used to integrate into existing apps and products that, um, you know, like a salesforce.com making a call or how Uber uses SMS. Um, we're talking about developers that come to CPaaS to solve a business need. Um, so they're creating products, they're creating these really cool solutions and apps, um, and they're productizing them in a lot of cases, or a lot of cases they're not because they're intimidated by the business process of that, the business model of getting that to market. So um, we've developed at VoIP Innovations a way to help get around that and help get what these developers are building out to the marketplace, out to the world, out through channels, out to millions of subscribers. So um, we know for a fact that there's a lot of apps out there that are being built that are based on UCAS feature sets. So what I like to think of CPaaS is, is deconstructing UCAS into, you know, by features. So if you Google search IVRs, you're going to get, I need the slide thing, you're going to get about 25 million results. So an IVR is an IVR, right? But uh, I'm gonna talk about this in a second. But an IVR itself, there's 25 million results. Not all of those are products, but I guarantee you there's a ton of IVR products out there. Why? Um, well, because each one solves a specific need that the other one doesn't. So there's a plethora of these apps that are being built because of CPaaS availability, CPaaS capabilities, and the popularity of, and growth of CPaaS. So I wanna, just to put things into context, let's talk about some analogies. Um, so talked about the food industry, the clothing industry, and the toy industry, um, if we want to think of it this way. And I chose these images more as they were kind of funny to UCAS. I have nothing against UCAS. All the UCAS providers are coming out with some great APIs, so you can extend. But uh, in the food industry, if you want to think in the UCAS mind mindset, where you have a black box, features, you get what you get. Uh, MREs, meals ready to eat, are meals that uh, the military puts out, most militaries around the world, to give their soldiers nutrition, um, all the calories, all the protein, everything they need to survive in combat. Okay, does it taste good? <laughs> Not really. Uh, but it solves the purpose, right? In the clothing industry, I have prison jumpsuits up here, but uh, in the clothing industry, um, think, of, think of prison jumpsuits as solves the purpose, covers your butt, keeps you warm. Is it stylish? No. Does it fit their styles? Not really. They don't want to be in them. But again, it solves the need. In the toy industry, I've got a toy train here. Think of anything that is a fixed toy that a kid's going to play with. That kid has to use his imagination to do anything else with that toy um, than what it's designed for. But it's still a train, right? So jump down to the CPAS introduction. Grocery stores are a great analogy of CPAS. I can go in, select anything I want, create any meal I want that fits my need, my style. Um, am I a chef? No. But I can do it to solve my, my need, right? Probably not gonna cook for others. 
And also, I, I, would, I would like to point out that I have a problem of going to the grocery store and standing in front of something in an aisle where there's 15 to 30 different choices of that same product. It's overwhelm, right? So in the clothing industry, same type of deal. You go to malls, retail, um, all, the, all the necessities are there for me to create what I want to wear to fit my style. Am I going to go out and design a wardrobe for somebody else? Probably not. Toy industry, the Lego analogy is obviously one everybody's familiar with. Uh, you see all the Legos out here. Um, it's a great analogy. Use your imagination, build what you want. You're probably not going to build a toy for other people, though. So take it down to what I call point solutions. Um, think of the UCAS feature set deconstructed. Okay, these are point solutions that solve a specific need that fits my style, but I don't have to create it. Um, so HEB is a major grocery chain in Texas, where we're from, and um, they take the ingredients from inside the store and package them into these easy little meals that have all the uh, protein and calorie count, whatever. You know, it has the nutrition I need for dinner, lunch, whatever. I just go home and pop it in the oven. And it also gives me ideas of the ingredients I can use to create my own, if I'm not a good cook. <laughs> Clothing industry, subscriptions. You see a ton of subscriptions now. You've got Stitch Fix. You've got all these other ones that, are, that have popped up that, you know, you have somebody that knows, that learns a lot about you. They create the package for you. It's personalized for me, fits the way I do things, fits what I want to wear, um, and I just pay them a monthly fee. So, wardrobe problem solved. The Lego analogy again in the toy world, Lego puts out all these kits. There's one on the table you can win out there right now, where, yeah, it's still Legos, but it's built in the style and the toy that I want. So, this helps you get, you know, relate, uh, you know, point solutions and CPAS into the analogy of what we're going to talk about. So how it was in the PBX, UCAS world, communications worked, you know, in a black box fashion. Somebody decided what feature set businesses needed to operate. So you have an IVR, you have extensions, you have phone dialing, conference calling, whatever, but it's all very black box, right? So. Traditionally, businesses had to adopt their processes to fit how the communication solutions worked. So CPAS changed that, and you know, Twilio and the other big ones did a great job of really evangelizing this and all these products being created that you can go Google search any feature set and find a product that's specific to that on the web that fits some solution, some business niche need um, now, businesses can tailor communication solutions to fit their business processes, which is huge. So, all the proliferation of these services on the web have really changed the mindset of the subscribers and what they expect from their providers, whether they're carriers, ITSPs that offer a hosted PBX service, the smaller MSPs that are the trusted advisor, IT guys for a business, um, two consultants and maybe a one-man show that is the computer guy that comes in and fixes things. They're the trusted consultants. They're the ones interacting with the customers the most. Uh, okay, so here, here's proof that the industry has shifted. So I'd say we've already done the CPAS shift. You know, the big ones set the expectation, or the customer's expectations on what they can do now with communications. Um, so what we're seeing now is the shift, number two, into enterprise services, where by 2025, a $100 billion industry, okay, that goes to show you that point solutions, building things that customers need to fit their business processes is where it's all going. So, CPaaS, we think of it as APIs, we think of it as programmable telecoms, uh, whatever. So I get APIs, I get a scripting interface, um, I can make a call do what I want, I can make an SMS do what I want, um, conference calls, what have you, integrate AI. But really, based on that previous slide, 
CPaaS itself is not just APIs, it's also about the things created on the APIs. So CPaaS is actually shifting from capabilities to solutions. So in the traditional model, which um, I said Twilio and, and the others have made really popular, is the developer-driven model. So in the developer-driven model, the CPaaS provider sells capabilities to a developer who needs to do something with communications. And, and the great thing about this is that, you know, they made it abstract in such a way that you no longer have to be a telecom engineer, write C code, et cetera, to do cool things with your communications and make it adapt to your business process. So, <clears throat> excuse me, with that, web developers now. Web develop any web developer, which is pretty much every developer on the planet now, um, you know, by the millions, uh, can build cool communications applications. So the problem with that is a lot of these developer, developers have built cool things and why Google search IVRs and get 25 million results is the developers decide, all right, somebody else could probably use this. I'm gonna market it, I'm gonna productize it. So a challenge with that is that developer has to deal with direct marketing. They may not be a great business guy. And I have to say, I'm technical. I'd like to think of myself as a business guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really a business guy. I'm a technical guy. So, and I create cool products too, but I haven't productized any of them because of this challenge, right? Um, so marketplaces pop up, affiliate networks, things like that. GrowSumo, for example, is, you know, I want to get my app that I've created that's really cool into GrowSumo and listed so that affiliates can come pick it up and, you know, sell it to their customers, market it. So I'm, I, I don't have to pay the marketing dollars, right? Somebody else, is, uh, somebody else is taking care of that for me and I just have to pay them a small commission. Totally worth it. And, you know, with these marketplaces that are out there that are really kind of network specific, you know, they may only reach a limited uh, target of customers. Um, my exposure is better, but it's not as good. So the idea is build a marketplace that works with a CPaaS platform. So when a developer comes into that CPaaS platform, builds a cool application, decides he wants to productize it, marketplace is all of a sudden a great, great uh, thing that now I can publish my app to and people can see it and, and pull it down and subscribe to it. Problem with this model is it's CPaaS dependent on a specific CPaaS platform an, and a specific marketplace. The challenge with that is a lot of providers now and a lot of CPaaS providers are developing their own marketplaces. So that developer creates a cool application. Again, he's limited to the reach that that CPaaS platform and that CPaaS provider has. So one thing I, I didn't bring up on the last slide, but I can on this one, is that box in the middle, the dotted line, the channels. And you heard Nexmo talk about this. This is where, this is where the customers live. They live in the channels. Um, and for the developers, you know, that, that could be argued that, oh, I, I can just go direct, then I don't have to pay anybody anything. But again, you're gonna be dealt with that, uh, have to deal with that direct marketing, the marketing dollars you're gonna have to spend, the business model, et cetera, for productizing that. So really, the best route is provide these channels something to sell. These channels are struggling now because they need more products in their portfolio to sell because of the proliferation of all these features and apps on the web that somebody can go direct to and subscribe to. Again, they have to find them, which is a big challenge as well. But to remain relevant, these channels really have to alter the products they sell and offer more. So, What's even better than the marketplace that CPaaS is, you know, that CPaaS is specific, is having a marketplace that doesn't care about the network. It just cares about the developer publishing the service. What this gives now, or provides now, is a mechanism where a developer can build an app on Twilio, or on Rescom, or on Plevo, or they may have just a PBX app they sell that they've written in, you know, they're a telecom, who, who cares? The idea is they publish it to the marketplace, now that's available to all the channels. So with that, Carrier One or ITSP or consultant guy can offer that to his customers in a white label fashion, he's got his branded app store, 
um, that has all these cool things now that he can bring to his customers and still remain that trusted advisor. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a fan-out mechanism for the marketplace. And by expanding it so that it doesn't matter what CPaaS platform it's on, you're actually funneling in developers from everywhere. So they don't have to migrate apps to your platform. They don't have to rewrite anything. It's just a mechanism for them to monetize what they build. And this is what people care about. This is what the subscribers care about. They need choice. Obviously, it has to work, so it's a curated marketplace. Apps are tested, validated, but they're published. And now also, with that, there could be six carriers that are offering this marketplace in however fashion they want. It could look the same, same UI, just rebranded. They can pull it in via API and create their own UI for it. They can drop JavaScript in, and it does all the listings for them in, in their, own, their own page. But uh, the idea is now, Developer publishes one app, exposure to millions of subscribers, independent of carrier or platform. It's pretty powerful. So how that works is the marketplace itself, what we call at VI our showroom, is a CPaaS application itself. So calls come in, a CPaaS provider routes a call to us based on the number. We can do what we need to do to get it to whatever CPaaS platform that uh, application that the developer created um, is built on. So again, really pow powerful, massive funnel in of developers and massive fan out of opportunity. So again, this just highlights what I've been saying since the beginning is developers are attracted to the massive opportunity and the subscriber base that's already there. So the chicken and egg scenario of having to build a channel tough, having to go find subscribers, having to do direct marketing, it's gone. So yeah, it creates a void. It creates a massive um, attraction to developers. We're also creating a massive attraction of resellers, if you will, or the channel partners, because now these applications are starting to pro proliferate that they can expand their product portfolios in, and they don't have to offer everything that's in the marketplace. They can pick and choose so that you know, there's no competitive product that may, they may already offer um, in, that, uh, in that marketplace that they offer to their customers. But the idea is the subscribers come in, decide they need an IVR. They don't have to go search and pick through 25 million. They can come in and say, all right, this one fits my law firm. I'm a mobile workforce, and all I use is cell phones. I just want an IVR that sits in front of that for my business line. I don't, I don't care. I just need that. It's right there. Just click, subscribe, done. We take care of all the billing. We provide billing webhooks to your billing system so that you can bill the customer. It doesn't matter. So the way I like to think about it is changing up CPaaS a little bit from communications platform as a service to from the developer's perspective, it's communicate, or I'm sorry, from the channel's perspective, it's communications point solutions as a service. So we're actually providing a service of giving you new things to sell, and at the same time, back to the developers, it's communications partners as a service. They don't have to build a channel, they don't have to market, any of that. Yeah, there's revenue share throughout the whole thing, everybody wins, but the amount of revenue share is less than what that developer would have to you know, spend on marketing and productizing and being the business guy behind his product that he would have to be if he went direct. Again, extremely powerful. So the bottom line is the massive channel partners starving for quick products they can deploy. They don't even have to deploy. Quick products that they can expand their portfolio with to satisfy their customer needs that their customers are otherwise going to the web and going around them for. And having a, a, list, uh, a hungry channel that needs these applications, like I said, you can go out to your and market towards the developers, towards the product guys. People with existing apps already in the web that's productized and they're having the direct marketing challenge. You go directly to them and say, hey, what if I brought you a channel that had millions of subscribers that need these types of services? No brainer. So the subscribers for the channels, carriers, the MSPs, those guys to remain relevant, you know, they have to have access to that plethora of uh, point solutions. 
So it's not just the APIs. I'm not going to say it's not the APIs anymore, but it's not just the APIs, because people are still wanting those. But you could offer APIs in the marketplace as well if they need to customize. But it's not about just the APIs. It's about how those products and solutions are monetized that are built on the APIs. That's it. Thank you. This is my contact information. We'll be out at VoIP Innovations booth if you want to chat more. And I did forget to say, you know, thank you for your introduction. I would like to say that I like to think myself as punk, but your presentation this morning, Adrian, blew me away. And I've got a lot to think about, man. That was amazing. So thank you. Hope you all got to see that.